my name is Christine Davis and this is my Defend the Program documentary. I interviewed a physical educator who is Randy Vodava from South Middle School and I asked him a couple of questions about physical education in a school system now. I learned a lot from him and I hope you would too. In the end of the video, I will also share you my own opinion about defending these programs and what research says about physical and health education. So keep on watching. My name is Randy Vadova and I am a physical education teacher here at South Middle School. Uh, I've been teaching, I taught elementary phi ed for 17 years and now I've switched into the middle school. Okay. So, and before that it was, I was in a different school district. So this is, I started teaching in 1992, so it's been a while. What um, college did you go to? UND. I got UND? my bachelor's yeah. and master's, both through UND. Okay. And did you like initially, like ever since you were little, you wanted to be like a physical educator? Yeah. I knew I wanted to be a teacher, not necessarily a phi ed teacher. Um, actually, I switched my major in college to phi ed because okay. I was going to be a history teacher. And then I just switched to Phi Ed. Okay, that's good. So, like, what made you, like, do that change? I had to take a, a class, kind of like the 305 class. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, it just kind of got interested more in the Phi Ed part of it. And so, I stuck with that. So, like, from, like, everything that you've learned in, like, um, when you were, like, a student, like, how does it actually feel to, like, be able to work with students and, you know, the physical and health it, education? It feels good to work with students. It's changed a lot. Um, different things, different fads come and go. And so now, like, our big battle is to get the kids away from their cell phones and just gaming devices and just go out and play. Yeah. So that's kind of a big one, how it's changed. Like, since, like, you, your experience, like, elementary and now middle school, which one do you, like, what's, like, the difference? Um, I, I don't want to ask, like, which one is better, but... The difference like, is you have a little bit more downtime, and you can carry on a conversation with a middle school kid, whereas in elementary, they're just intense, and it's just assembly line, class in, class out. There's no in-between time, because... At middle school, you know, they use the locker room, so there's a little bit of downtime. So I think that'd be the big difference. It's more, it's more intense, and you're more exhausted from mental exhaustion at the end of the day. Is it like a half an hour, or like how long is like students like for middle school? For middle school, yeah. Middle school is usually between forty-five and fifty minutes of okay. um, a shot. How about elementary? Elementary, that varies depending on the elementary school. That could be anywhere between 20 minutes to 45. It just depends on how uh, the principal decides to set the elementary up. Okay, so, so. every elementary is different. Yeah, they okay. have, they're supposed to meet so, uh, so many minutes a week. And so if, let's say it's 90 minutes, some of them do three times 30 minutes and some do two times for 45. And it just, it depends on how the principal does it. Okay. And then... Um, do you also teach the health education part? No, I, I used to teach the health also in elementary, but we have a health teacher in middle school. Okay, so, so it's separate? Yeah. Okay. Is that through all school or just here? In South That's school? all schools in Grand Forks, and I'm thinking um, the, con the, the class is separate, but in some schools it might be the phi ed teacher teaches a couple health classes, a couple phi ed classes. Okay. But yeah. here it's that phi ed or the health teacher, that's all they do. Oh, interesting. Do you know if, like, they, is that different from, like, the 40 minutes that you you teach? Or is it, like, you guys take turns? Or they have, they're their own class, so they have the same number of minutes we do. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, and so, like, since we're talking about, like, the importance of physical education, like, can you tell us, like, what you think about, like, all the budget cuts? Like, you know, usually it's, like, the art, music, and the physical education slash, you know, health. 
does get cut up right away. Like I know like a lot of research says that um, you know physical education is important for you know students it's like give them a break and especially like with growth mindset and like the more they move and stuff like that it's better for them. So like what's your opinion about you know the budget cuts? Usually <laughs> the people who make the budget cuts hated Fayed as a youngster and there is so much research out there. Um, that it actually physical activity improves test scores but sometimes they don't want to hear that because they think if you hammer down the core curriculum down kids throats that their test scores are going to go up and actually they've shown that they go down so I don't know it, it they the budget cuts I don't know people think that they're they're doing the students a favor but actually in reality looking at test scores after they make the cuts they're like yeah we messed up I know that's interesting because like we've always talked like I know like back in the day like like there's a lot of like even recess and stuff like that and now recess are getting cut back and stuff like that and they think like you know they need more time to like study but then they act, I feel like students actually need break from you know that mental yeah the academic part of it. Usually usually this it's the school board that makes the decisions and some of them have never than inside of a classroom except for their educational experience mm -hmm. and so they don't realize that you go in a regular classroom and some kids can't sit still after 20 minutes and so they go take an activity break and they come back and now they're good for another 20 minutes but sometimes the decision makers don't they're so far removed from um, the classroom they don't understand that stuff um so and then i would say like I've also read like research about some schools since they don't have the budget for like the physical education they actually have like leave it up to the general education teacher to teach um, PE so what, what do you think about that? That's a budget issue and you can't fault the schools yeah. for that because of budget stuff that's why this 305 cl uh, class came into being and a lot of times because FIED and recess have totally different focuses it ends up where a classroom teacher will just say okay we're going outside do whatever you want and so they don't get the FIED experience you know the way it's truly intended and so hopefully through you know the 305 class people can get an experience yeah this is what a FIED class should look like and maybe get some resources yeah this is what I can use if I'm ever a FIED teacher yeah, I like the, I really enjoy this um, class because, like you said, like, it's not really, like, the teacher's, you know, fault and stuff, like, it's more like the budget part of it, so it's, it was interesting to go through the whole program and study about physical education. I'm never, I'm not the sporty one, but it's good to come up with, like, you know, objectives and stuff like that for the students. Oh, yeah, because if you can see, even though you're not going to be a fire teacher, if you can see what goes into a good phi ed class mm -hmm. you kind of get an understanding just like i'm a phi ed teacher but i go into other classrooms and i kind of see what what it takes to be a good science teacher or health teacher or language arts or whatever and so you get a, you get an appreciation for what that teacher does and i actually like that we could like cross curricular like all the subject because it doesn't yeah. just have to be like you know physical activity but like just get kids moving and stuff like that, yeah. even in like different like subject areas. Yeah, I used to do that quite a bit in the elementary school when I was there because some kids, they're bodily kinesthetic learners mm -hmm. and you give them a lecture, they don't get it. You give them whatever, they don't get it. But when they can move and do it, then it, they, it, they remember it more. Yeah, I really enjoyed that, yeah. And then I would say like if you were to pick between, have you ever thought on um, health education first? Like, like uh, an actual just I would incorporate topic. into the Phi Ed class and some a couple years when I was elementary they said they took away some of the minutes for Phi Ed and said you have to teach health so I have done health at the elementary okay. so if you were if it was your program and they only like give you like one option which one would in your opinion would you rather save I think I would rather well, that's a tough one because mm -hmm. they're both important, but if it was me personally, if I was given the choice, I would stick with Phi Ed 
and then incorporate the health content into my daily lesson plans. So I'd still hit them both. Anything else that you want to share, like anything that goes on, like with experience of being like a teacher as a physical educator? You know, we're getting more into standards-based assessment, so we use the state um, standards quite a bit. And now, um, like our school district uses the Robert Marzano as our teacher evaluation tool. Mm -hmm. And so Marzano is making our school district um, do standards-based assessments. And I am pretty well versed on that, and I've been waiting for that time to come. And so now I'm kind of helping teach teachers, this is how you, these are the standards, and this is how you incorporate them, and this is how you assess them. And so down the road, you're going to see real fast standards-based assessments in all content areas. Mm -hmm. So how does your day kind of like go about like so a student comes in and like can you give us like kind of like a brief of like how your 45 minutes like a classroom's 45 minutes? Okay well the kids will come in we we have typically 49 minutes and so we give the kids five minutes at the beginning of class to change in their gym uniforms and we give them five minutes at the end to change in their gym uniforms so that gives us 39 minutes. And so then when the kids come into the gym, we have them get right into activity, and then we'll do warm-ups after that. And then um, after we do the warm-ups and attendance, then we try to incorporate a little bit of fitness, um, whether it's me sharing some fitness knowledge or us looking at, at um, some fitness thing. I actually use a book. It's really it's a great book I every day pretty much. Um, Fitness for Life. I use that and we go through that, you know, take a little bit, of, digest a little bit of information every day. And so that way it's not just a fitness unit, it's fitness throughout the whole school year. And they seem to learn stuff because they'll be coming back and telling me information that we learned at the beginning of the school year. And so I think they're learning it. And so then after we get into the fitness component, then we only, I usually, I call it five minutes of fitness because I start a kitchen timer and the timer goes off, I shut up. And then we get into whatever our focus is that day. And then, like, if it's floor hockey or basketball, we'll do that. And then at the end, um, we'll have some type of a closure where we bring kids together, talk about our learning goal for the day, and then we send them back to the locker room, and then the next class comes in. How many um, classes do you teach in a day? I do five classes a day, and I have ten classes total because we're on a day one, day two schedule. So um, every other day I'll have it. And then, what do you think are students' favorite, like, um, like physical activity? Is it more like the sporty ones, or, like? Um, that depends <laughs> on the individual kid. Most kids like sports, but sometimes, like, we did a jump rope unit, and sometimes the kids are like, you know, this is the best unit we ever do, because it reminded me of being little, and it's not a sport activity. And so I, I, I guess it depends on each individual kid. So we try to do a ton of different stuff in hopes that, hey, we'll hit something that you like, and we just tell the kids, you may not like everything we do, but we're going to give you such an exposure, that way you can have, you have experience in it. Does everyone, every student participate, or like some sit on the sidelines? Or we like... have them participate. Some participate more than others, and especially now, this time of the school year, um, some of our eighth graders especially eighth grade girls have kind of checked out, you know, they're too cool to do stuff and um, but for the most part they all participate. So like I guess like we've talked about in our like in this class the um, what do you think about dodgeball? Do you guys still do? Dodgeball is not allowed in our building um, because in order for you to actually teach a unit correctly you're supposed to break down the skills and so if you wanted to break down the skills correctly for dodgeball, you basically should line everybody up against the wall and start whipping balls at their heads because that's how dodgeball ends up. And so we don't play dodgeball here. And there's a ton of research out there that backs up that decision to not play dodgeball because that actually is kind of a form of bullying because kids will target kids they don't like and then it's just an issue. So um, we don't do dodgeball in our building. We actually did that in class, and it was, like, interesting, and we're like, 
why is this, you know, done in classrooms? So yeah. it was interesting. <laughs> it's like you had to like stop it, like the, like after like the first like two minutes, because it was crazy. And how about like um, I don't know if do you guys still do like um, like picking captains, like you know, asking two students and pick. Nope, we okay. don't <laughs> pick captains because usually the kid that's not well liked is the last kid, least athletic. So. And that takes too much of your gym time. So basically, when anytime there's teams, we'll make teams. Um, I'll make the teams. Otherwise, I have some apps I use on my computer that I'll just hit a button and it will create the teams. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we don't let kids pick teams because it just it doesn't go anywhere but bad. How about what's your, I'll say, like, best classroom management that you would, like, recommend? I think the best classroom management is hold the kids accountable for what you want. So if you want to talk and kids are screwing around, don't talk. You know, make sure you they have the basketball or whatever on the floor or whatever you want them to do. Um, and I think classroom management also, if you get the kids into a routine and they know the routine, what's coming up next, um, I think it's really beneficial for them because some kids, that's how their life is, is a routine. And if you go out of, out of the routine, it throws them for a loop. So I think keeping in a routine is, is kind of key too. I've really enjoyed this interview with Mr. Vadova and I've learned so much about physical education and what a physical educator really do in a classroom and especially the breakdown of how his 45 minutes um, in a classroom is. And also, I didn't know that some schools have separate physical educator and health educator, and some only have one of whichever the principal picks, or also depends on the budget. And I hope you guys enjoyed this interview with him, and learned some new information as well so right now i was i would also like to share with you my opinion on defending this program according to the 2011 national health and nutrition examination survey approximately 17 percent of young americans ages 2 to 19 are obese obesity is the result of eating too much calories and not getting enough physical activity According to CDC, 12% of children do not eat fruits, 6% do not eat vegetables, and 11% drink sugary beverages. Guidelines suggest that children and youth need at least 30 to 60 minutes of accumulated physical activity on all or most days. They need moderate activity to have at least 10 to 15 in duration each day. But shockingly, 81.1% of adolescents do not even engage in recommended amount of physical activity. And 69% of students do not attend daily physical education classes while in school. So in school, most students spend their time doing academics and getting ready for, you know, standardized testing. They mostly sit in school and do not get a lot of physical activity aside from physical education. When students get home, they mostly spend their time doing homework, sitting on a couch, playing video games, and watching TV or focuses on their electronics. Research has shown that cardiovascular disease is the number one leading cause of death, and 60% of adults are overweight or obese. Overweight, poor diet, and lack of physical activity also contributes to one-third of all cancer. No more, now more than ever, our children need to be active to have a healthy lifestyle and also improve their cognition. What we need is a quality physical education program in our school. Research has shown that physical activity has numerous benefits for children. It increases health benefits for better quality of life and students' classroom behavior increase mental alertness and improve self-esteem. Increasing physical activity in children can lead to better academic achievement. It helps improve cognition and social skills. Other research has found that students who are engaged in daily physical education 
programs consistently show not just superior motor fitness, but better academic performance and a better attitude toward school than their students who don't participate in daily physical education. Students nowadays spend most of their time sitting in a classroom and they get little to no break from any academics. Students get recess in school, but some teachers can take it away because of students' behavior or students not being engaged in doing their schoolwork. So instead of getting a break, they actually have to stay back and finish the schoolwork. We need to change this. We need to keep physical education in our school system more than ever. Exercise is one of the most powerful tool to improve brain function. According to Dr. John Ratey, Exercise elevates the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, a protein that supports survival of neurons and encourages growth of synapses in the brain. It's vital for learning, memory, and higher thinking. By doing physical activity, students are able to stay focused, remain on task, and complete tasks more accurately. As an adult, we know how it is to be overworked and not get any breaks. Just like us, students need to break and exercise their body and mind by doing physical activity. Research have shown us that benefits of having physical activity. We need to keep the physical education in our school system. I will implement health education in my class as well. My goal is to keep students moving. They need to move and exercise, but aside from taking care of their physical need, they also need to take care of emotional, mental, and social aspects of health. Health focuses on attitude, behavior, and skills related to knowledge transferred from teacher to student. Health education instructs life skills that will help student problem solve, make better and informed decisions, think critically, communicate effectively, and manage their lives in a healthy and productive way. There is also a lot of growth and development that happens to children during elementary schools, and it can be overwhelming for some. So we need to be there for our children and offer them information that they could really use and offer them support. If it was my decision, I would keep physical education, and my goal will be to keep students moving because children learn best through moving their bodies. I will then implement health education into my class. I will instruct my students on activities that will help them emotionally build social skills and understanding the importance of life skills. I will also make sure to differentiate to the needs of my students because let's be honest, it's not one size fits all. Mostly students tend to not like physical education or any physical activity because it focuses more on students who are really good at it. and. It only focuses on sports. As we know, not all sports are for everyone. Um, too many physical education classes um, in schools so today focus heavily on team sports and not everyone is really good at that. What I would encourage is having teaching students uh, motor, fitness, cognitive, affective behavior, and active lifestyle needs and they could focus on the importance of lifetime involvement in physical activity. I want my students to do physical activity because that's what's important. They need to keep moving. But at the same time, I want my students to understand that love for physical activity because Right now, while they're in school system, we want them to keep moving, to get active. That's our goal. But also, our goal should also be what will happen to them when they get out of the school system or when they graduated. They should be able to maintain and keep doing physical activity so they won't get any diseases or anything that could increase their chance of getting any disease. Judith Young, who is an executive director of the National Association for Sports and Physical Education, says that physical education, in physical education, we need to concentrate on movement. We should teach our students how the body works and how to keep it working, which I very, very highly agree on because we cannot just teach our students, you know, okay, do, do um, a sports or like, do volleyball but if they don't understand 
how it will help them later on in life, I don't think that they would really engage on those activity. What I would suggest is, or what I would do personally, is teach all types of movements. So there will be dance, mindfulness, and activities that are geared toward students' interests. So I will differentiate my lesson to the needs of my students and really use their strengths and weaknesses in their multiple intelligence. So I would also, when I teach my students um, a certain activity, I would, should also be able to stretch that out for, you know, two, three weeks. Because most of the time, any physical activity that we teach our children or our students, they do it one or two times, but they don't, they don't get a chance to actually master the activity. So according to Kathy Checkley, physical educators can help students make that commitment by aligning instruction with the national standards for physical education and by creating curriculum and activities designed to instill within students a desire to be active for life which I, like I said, I highly, highly agree on because yes, we can teach our students in school to be active and yes, they could do, you know, 45 minutes of physical acti activity in a classroom. But what we should really instill in them is that desire to be active, to be healthy. And I feel that by keeping that physical education in school and combining that with health education, we could really teach our students to make better decisions, problem solve, and also have the love for any physical activity to be healthy. In defending this program, I would keep physical education and implement health education through my, educa my physical education classes. I would have my students move, keep moving, be active, but also I will teach them life skills that they would need, not just in the classroom, but also life skills that they could use when they graduate, when they move further into their education or in their lives. If we're thinking short term and narrow thinking, yes, physical education will Cutting physical education and health education will save money. But what they're not thinking is in the long term, you know, decrease in physical education in school will only mean that fewer healthy lifestyle choices in childhood and adulthood. So meaning that it will increase more diseases and overweight related health issues. That means that higher healthcare costs for our nation would just increase. So in the long term, we're actually not saving money by keeping physical education and health education in our school system. And plus we're only hurting our children because we're not giving them this opportunity and knowledge to make right choices and keeping them healthy by being active. So for me, I would, like, I would save physical education now and implement health education also in my classes and I will defend this because we know research have shown that attending physical education classes increases a child's better academic performance and attitude toward school. It will not hurt them but it will increase not just their physical activity, but also their, you know, their grades in school and their academic performance. They would also learn other skills as well by doing physical activity because they're playing or they're doing physical activi activity with their friends. So not only like physically, but they're growing emotionally, socially, and managing and regulating their self. And that is it for my Defend the Program documentary. And again, my name is Christine Davis, and I'll see you guys later.